In the clean, temperate waters of the Pacific Northwest lies a $30 million sea farm, the first and only one of its kind, where marine phytoplankton is naturally grown and harvested. Tom Harper began growing and harvesting marine phytoplankton to feed his shellfish hatchery, but a chance discovery would lead him down a different path. It was about a seven to eight year process to get this down to where we could grow vast amounts of this algae. Uh, however, while we were doing this, I got sicker and sicker and sicker and to the point that I was told I didn't have too long to be uh, doing what I was doing and that I should look to sell things and do that. The doctors told me I was, uh, wasn't going to be here for very many weeks or months. One day standing there thinking of these things, I looked at the product that I was producing and uh, thought, you know, there's plants in here, microscopic plants that no one's for sure ever looked at for health reasons. So I started eating it. And lo and behold, within a very few days, I started to feel quite well compared to where I was. When realizing this, that it had helped me and that, you know, I started uh, looking how we could market it. And locally, we did a bit of it and it seemed to many, many people all of a sudden were wanting this product. They were just coming from nowhere. Everybody who has ever been to the beach has seen macroalgae, which is seaweed, um, kelp and the different seaweed that washes up on shore. Marine phytoplankton is actually microalgae. It's microscopic, it's invisible to the human eye. But what our process does is it allows us to create such an abundance of it that it becomes visible to the human eye. Whales live on this stuff. Many of the whales do, even up to 100, 200 years and enjoy a healthy love life. Uh, NASA is all over the research of marine phytoplankton. One of the things they declared was that it's responsible for up to 90% of our oxygen, but the tell-all is a nutritional analysis. Lab testing of the marine phytoplankton revealed an astounding array of phytonutrients and sea minerals. Over 60 vitamins, minerals, essential fatty acids, amino acids, and other nutrients. The sea farm's marine phytoplankton seemed to contain all the necessities of life. Uh, marine phytoplankton is just a huge development with aquaculture and sea farms. It's making available to us just about every amino acid, vitamin, mineral, polysaccharide or healthy sugars and oils, essential oils that the body needs. One of the problems that you see in chronic disease is that the digestive system is usually shut down and so is the liver. And both of those are necessary in order to get the raw materials into the body to make new cells and thus to heal. One of the beauties about uh, frequency and marine phytoplankton is that the marine phytoplankton are microscopic and therefore don't require a, a large digestive process and don't require processing by the liver to get into the system. And so the microscopic form uh, of the marine phytoplankton makes it uh, almost magical in being able to begin to uh, turn around the nutritional deficiencies of people with chronic disease. Could you survive in plankton alone? Probably, but it'd be pretty boring. And so I look at plankton as a super multivitamin, if you will. I'm not fond of multivitamins. I think they're poorly absorbed, very synthetic, too little of too many vitamins. And so if you're going to supplement, according to the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, it better be whole food. And so whole food is what plankton is, even though it's microscopic. Over the past nine years, with his development of the phytoplankton, there's been an explosion of sea life on the beach. We send back the water cleaner than what we bring it in. And at times, we're putting back huge amounts of algae that, uh, that we just don't need to use. So we send that back to the ocean. When people walk out there now, you know, they're walking on thousands and thousands of shells of, of clams and oysters that, that are living there. We've had an explosion in the otter population, um, California sea lions, eagles. The marine phytoplankton is a basis of the food chain in the ocean, so when we're able to strengthen the base of what's supporting our entire ecosystem in the ocean, it's a beautiful thing. One of the great things about this area where they're at is it's where the ocean and fresh water actually meet and because of the climate there, they're able to produce literally hundreds of different species of marine phytoplankton. I had heard of algae, freshwater algae, the blue-green algae, the spirulina, the chlorella, which are three different species that grow in freshwater. 
What's attractive about marine phytoplankton is you take those three species and add them to hundreds of others species and put them in your grocery basket. I mean, that's the difference between three vegetables and 215. And this gives them a geographic advantage of any other place in the world. Another thing that sets our marine phytoplankton apart um, from some of the other algae that may be out there on the market is we're actually harvesting our product wild for each and every batch. So from season to season, um, the species will change slightly. Not huge differences, but enough where they are adju actually adjusting to the season. The healthiest way for a person to eat is according to season. People will have a problem with, uh, with a friend or a neighbor saying, here, try this. Uh, South African jungle juice had helped me and I, it made me feel wonderful and I'm sure it'll help you and so you take it and nothing happens. And so what's the reason for that? Well, it's because they were deficient in a different thing than you're deficient in. They might need some element that's in South African jungle juice and you don't. You have that but you're missing something else and that's why so many people buy so many different nutraceuticals and don't work. If you are fortunate enough then to identify some substance that has everything that you need to build a perfect cell, that's magic. And that magic occurred when we got marine phytoplankton. So it's one of the rare total foods. We have our water tested very regular and uh, we also have our products tested for every batch. We were checking just in case somehow there was a problem. We bring our scientific director, Rowan Haig, in. He takes a sample of the water directly from the tank and he goes back to the laboratory and he actually goes through and tests each and every species of plankton that exists there to make sure that in fact each species is benign and safe for human consumption. And out of all the hundreds and hundreds of, of uh, batches that we've you know, harvested algae from, we've never had a concern. Tom Harper had succeeded in harvesting marine phytoplankton in sufficiently large quantities that it became, for the first time in world history, available for human consumption. Word of his discovery spread quickly. We were open to having uh, people involved with, you know, helping us bring this out, out to the rest of the population, but we were very concerned that you know, it, it may just attract greed rather than heart. And we were looking for people that had a good business sense and, and a good heart and understood truly how significant and how beautiful this product is. We saw it in the newspapers. It made the cover of the newspapers up there. And one of our people sent it to us and we became very interested. Ron Williams ended up coming out to our office after the initial meeting was set up and uh, had a meeting with myself and my dad. He had met with several companies before talking to us. and. You know, that put me a little bit back on my heels, but I think when we began to discuss our visions of the future and what contributions we want to make to mankind, to the earth, uh, within just a short matter of time, our visions aligned. And I think that was, uh, that was no accident. But we listened to what Ron had to say and uh, liked his uh, views on 